episode of Legend of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. Uh, this is actually the alt campaign, the campaign otherwise known as the Great Confusion, which was intended to be thematic for the story, but ended up being kind of a real-world recognition as well, I think, in the end. Uh, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I am your host and GM, and I have collected with me the players. Say hello, guys, starting from my left with Silas. My name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, the uh, about to go explorer cult temple, I think. Hi, uh, I am Marie, and I am playing Annalise, who is a human rogue. Hey, I'm Max, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric, and I'm also in the process of, ro of logging into Roll Twenty. <laughs> well, uh, there you go. And like my cat off the keyboard. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably introduce the cats at some point, but yeah. uh, they'll introduce themselves even if we don't as well. So welcome again. Um, I don't remember what number episode this is. I think this is 19 or something of this new, of this particular game. No, it's 20-something. 20 20-something? 20 well, okay. Uh, if you go to youtube.com slash ENCAF1, you can find the full list of the episodes. If you missed some before, but I will give you a handy recap here at the beginning of the, at least the previous episode. So there's some idea where we're all at. Uh, remember also that if you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, watch it live on Sundays, generally on 2.30 Atlantic time. Something. Uh, this right? is episode 20. This is episode 20. There you go. I feel like it's I was too bad off. I, I could have swore I knew the number at least roughly. Thank you very much, Marie. In the previous episode, after Dr. Marigold's revelation of the name engraved on the side of the vase, he seemed somewhat rattled and quickly ushered the group out of his shop into the pouring rain. Annie noticed someone watching them, what appeared to be a young woman dressed in a simple peasant dress of blue and white. The woman walked away hurriedly, and Annie pursued, but the trail was soon lost in the maze of streets of Veilthwater. The group decided to meet up with Captain Verendel, who accepted their suggestion of a shared, sharing a meal at a nearby fancy restaurant, The Silver Button. Over salmon and steak and wine, they discussed some of the goings-on over the last few weeks. The captain was not happy about having to fill out the gar with so many untested people, but insisted that most of them even came with some recommendations, even the suspicious twins Flip and Flax that the group had seen before. They had come with a letter of recommendation from one Alphonse Meyer, a tailor in the town. Despite their misgivings, Verendel suggested that it might work out in his favor to keep his enemies closer where he could see them. Annie suggested that she should continue to work with the guard. The captain had a slightly different idea. Rather than just being another watch tender, he might be able to make her an official investigator. This would give her some small authority as well as a small stipend. She agreed, then he promised to have the paperwork ready, probably around the next day. Over dinner, they learned a little bit more about Verendel, including that he was one of he was the odd one in his family, choosing a path or a soldiering in law rather than the scholarly life his parents and siblings took back in New, Hidd New Huddleston. He came from considerable means as well and paid for the entire meal when it was all done. After leaving the silver button, the group reconvened in Annie's private room in the Three Bells to talk about what had been going on. Annie revealed that the shadowy being she believed to be the diamond had approached her before the battle and offered to help, but she had refused it. All of them agreed that they needed to go and seek out Cathron soon, to ask for her knowledge and possibly seek guidance. In the end, they still had more questions unanswered, so decided to call it a day. As they entered, re-entered rather, the main room of the Three Bells, the outside door burst open, helped by the howling gale outside. A muddy, soaked, frantic man stood there, then staggered into the room, and walked quickly to Silas. It is Luther Glass, a member of Silas's extended family. He spoke desperately that his wife, Mira, was missing, and he needed their help to find her. And that's where we began. The patrons in the Three Bells, the few that are there, are watching all of this. The music has kind of taken the stop for the moment. Everybody seems to be turning with eyes on you guys. What would you like to do? I don't know any of these people, but clearly they know Silas, so I'm just going to observe what they do. 
<laughs> one person, Luther. <clears throat> so have we already had this talk last week or are we redoing it? We basically just moved the the encounter because you, you had a desire to have a, a private personal encounter with the rest of the group. So uh, the the same basic words were said, just slightly different order and different space. I don't remember okay. exactly what he told you, but you want. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. When, when I start hearing what's saying, I, I do do point out we can go upstairs if you want. Um, no, that's fine. Um, uh, hmm. I'll kind of move aside so if uh, dude wants to sit down at our table, he can. Well, so basically, I, my chair I, sideways a little bit. He said that uh, his wife had gone off. She'd seen visions of a temple or something. Um, I probably shush him a little bit because there's people in the room. Uh, but uh, I had told him that uh, I'd take care of it, that she was safe, uh, the mother would keep her safe, and to go back to the village. And he had told me the route to get there. That's what I remember from last session. Okay. Uh, so I would just uh, uh, say, don't worry, she'll be safe. And then uh, turn around to the others and say, um, I know this is a family matter, but I could use your help if you're willing. Uh, you mentioned a temple. That wouldn't happen to be the same temple we're heading at, right? I don't think so, no. It's the other direction. So the, the rough directions, the, the temple you had been at before was out towards the sort of southeastern uh, edge. That's where most of the farmlands are, and it's on beyond that. The directions that Luther would have given you essentially were to go uh, to the uh, roughly north uh, eastern direction to go along the Royal Road, and then a series of landmarks. Um, he does want to go with you, though. He hasn't left yet. Um, he's kind of feels like he doesn't want to leave at this point. Um, but he would tell you that from what he remembers Mira saying, um, there was a dead tree, then a standing stone, four trees, two on either side, folded inward across the path as if forming an archway, and then an old cobblestone road, along with the remains of an old stone wall. If he wants to go, then that's fine. <laughs> he seems frantic. His eyes are wide. He's uh, still soaking wet, I'm sitting at your table, <laughs> looking pleadingly at Silas, uh, more than just concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a late, late afternoon, early evening right now. It's uh, at this point, it would be early evening. But dark as night outside due to the thick clouds. Yeah. You mean we, we'd be going right now? I'll ask Silas and look at Dude. Has he introduced himself, by the way? Uh, uh, he probably wouldn't have, but uh, uh, yeah, Silas would say his name's Lucas. Luther. Luther, sorry. Is it Luther? Actually, I, I might have typed that wrong myself. Let me just double check here. No, it's Luther. Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Luther Glass. Uh, he's uh, about a, a little shorter than you are, Medrick. Um, okay. Dark skin. Uh, very short, uh, almost shaved black hair. Um, his uh, eyes are wide with concern. Um, you see, uh, Medrick, actually make an, uh, uh, an insight roll. All right. Inside. Yes, welcome to roll 20. Okay. <laughs> I said. Well, that's yeah. not very good. <laughs> um, he He's definitely rattled. He's definitely concerned. Um, 
he keeps glancing over at Silas for confirmation with just about any words he says, or even as things are going uh, going along as, as Silas is describing the plans. Um, there's almost a, a, a deferential um, way that he's responding to Silas. Uh, and the edge maybe of fear? I'll introduce myself, enter and hi, Medrick. Uh, would we be going right now? I'll look back and forth between <coughs> and either. Uh, uh, I'll be heading out. Um, if you wish to stay, then I understand. She's been missing for a few hours now, and well, I'm starting to get concerned. Her visions have been growing. And he kind of stops himself, looking and realizing he's in kind of a public space. Yeah. Lowers so his Silas voice. is keeping his voice a little low. He lowers his voice a little bit. The desperation, though, kind of keeping that voice level from getting too low. The visions have been stronger lately. Drawing her forward. She told me she'd have to go, but I, I can't just let her go. So she left. Of she left by herself. She wasn't abducted. I didn't see her go, but I presume so. No one said anything. She came in from this morning from the boat, and she had a, a distant look in her face. I had a feeling something might come up. When she didn't show for supper, I... I well, I started looking around. Well, I suppose I can come along. I mean, if, if we're not going to be fighting hordes of bandits. I don't know what we'll find. I mean, you do recall that off the Royal Road was where some of the bandit attacks were coming from. Yeah. That's where the caravans come back and forth. But this area is largely just forested, and apparently there's an old building out there somewhere. Well, <clears throat> All right, let me, go, let me go grab my stuff. And I'll leave the table and go back to my room and pick up my stuff. As in the hammer and the shield and all that jazz. And my cloak. Because uh, it's, rainy, it's rainy as hell out there. Yeah. Uh, Silas will look over at Annie and uh, just motion with his eyebrows. Uh, there. Uh, are you coming or do you prefer to stay? I can come as well. Thank you. And Silas will head out to... Uh, Actually, Silas will head to the, uh, I'm assuming, because Silas was keeping clothes here, there's probably a small room he changes in. Uh, I mean, when there's he probably has doubles as a here. closet, but yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, he'll go change uh, out of his robes and into his uh, normal gear, then uh, go to his horse in the stable and grab the shield and okay. his backpack. When you come back to the common room, Sandy is actually by the table with her hand on, Lu on Luther's shoulder. Uh, he's wrapping his hands around some sort of steaming beverage. You can smell the warmed mulled cider that she's probably brought him in the meantime. Poor dear, you'll catch the death of cold. Luther's just sort of shaking his head. You can kind of hear the murmur in the room. There's a lot of low discussion happening right now. Undoubtedly, at least part of that discussion has to do with this strange entrance. Well, I'll give them something to talk about. Silas will wait for the others. Medrick takes a few minutes to assemble his gear. What about Annie? What's she doing in the meantime? Um, I mean, Annie had already changed. That's why she had gone up to her room in the first place. Um, so she would just run up, grab her. Uh, she has a rapier, right? Which she mainly uses. Grab her stuff and. Okay, and the dagger. Come back down. At, uh, uh, Vice. She has her dagger on her leg at all times. So you're probably the back, first one back to the table where Luther is, is kind of waiting. If you want to talk to him, that's up to you. Um, 
she's kind of awkward with the situation. She doesn't know him. She knows nothing about the situation. So she's just kind of there, there. Uh, kind of with Sandy on, on the make him feel kind of comfortable and luxury, maybe. Okay. Um, he's kind of sipping deeply on the on the cider that's been brought. Sandy leaves and goes and tends to a few other tables. You hear her kind of uh, snapping her fingers at a few of the other uh, tables, kind of like, hey, look, pay attention here. I'm trying to get you your order. Uh, you get the feeling that she's kind of drawing a bit of the attention away from Luther uh, as well. Uh, kind of calming the room and, and uh, not so much shushing the, the, the rumors and stories that are flying around so much as interrupting them with just being herself uh, and her, her smiling warm self, uh, occasionally bringing out uh, some of the fresh rolls that have been made by her sister in the back, uh, kind of just plunking them on the table noisily, you know, again, kind of disrupting their, their, uh, their focus talk. After a few minutes, Medrick comes back down with his stuff. Silas has already kind of gone through, and you know that he headed outside as well. The rest of you convene outside? Yep. But I'll finish my ale first. Okay. It's a little warmer because you left it there, but then again, most of the ale is pretty warm anyway. No, well, Silas uh, thanks uh, Sandy uh, for the, uh, the alcohol uh, and says, uh, put it on my tab. No need to worry about it, dear. Just be okay, safe. Silas. Be careful. It's dangerous out there. Yes, it is. Well, you be safe as well. And then, uh, yeah, he'll head out. Uh, I'm, I'll be leaving Blondie uh, since we'll be going through the woods. So I'll be back. We'll take good care of her. I expect to hear the tale of this sometime. In a song, maybe? Possibly, yes. You don't want me to sing. You'll have no customers. <laughs> I definitely want you to sing now. <laughs> maybe on a slow day when I you're not here anyway. What was that? And anyway? I'm like, I'm making an oh shit expression. <laughs> You've committed to it now. <laughs> You'll have to do it for tax purposes. <laughs> <laughs> you get outside and the low rumble of thunder uh, is heard off in the distance Thus, the clouds have been continuing that d thick uh, dark rolling mass that seems to come in off of the water more so now than ever the rain has abated slightly but not a lot it's still pelting down from time to time just not continuously uh, Luther shivers a little bit, but maybe emboldened by the fact that all of you are there, or the strong cider he just had. Um, he takes a deep breath. All right, I, I think it's in this way, and leads you on. I'll follow. Silas will help, since he can see better than the rest can. Uh, just trying to point out the, the things that he had mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Moving along the Royal Road, it's still it's uh, uh, still in working great working order. It's any something you know that there has been a lot of push in the last two generations to make sure that the major routes connecting cities and connecting ports have been well maintained. And even despite all of the other issues that are happening here, this mo this road is still well attended to. Not a stone out of place. Looks like some of them have even been replaced recently. So at least that part is still functioning well even here. As you begin onto the Royal Road, the clouds get a little bit lighter, but the sun is already dipping below the horizon at this point, so not much extra assistance, just more of a, of a gray and gold glow just off in the edge of the forest. Uh, about uh, a few more feet after that, the rain itself is abated, but that, that thunder cloud seems to have rolled in over the entire region now. Uh, not just a part of a storm that's rolling over the Elthwater constantly, but actually a, a, an independent storm, if you will, to cover the whole area. The first thing that Luther points out uh, is indeed this, this enormous ancient tree. It uh, looks like it was struck by lightning and fallen over a long time ago. Thick, heavy moss on the side of it as it's uh, laying down on the ground. 
I think that's the beginning of the trail. It looks exactly like she described it. I've probably seen it a dozen times, but never noticed it. Mm -hmm. So there's a trail in here somewhere? It's more, and he glances over at Silas, kind of hesitant to explain. It's more like a series of impressions. She's seen it for a few weeks, each time a little more detail. I heard her every night. She would murmur it in her sleep. Well, best we continue on then. Find her as fast as we can. I'll pick up a stone and cast the light cantrip. Ah, my dark vision. <laughs> <laughs> ah! yeah. uh, it glows a slightly uh, orangish glow as well, closer to uh, candlelight f uh, color than uh, than pure uh, flame and pure uh, okay. uh, fire. Uh, and uh, so that's not normal. <laughs> It, it, it isn't exactly normal, but it, it, it feels warmer to you. It feels more um, like the presence of Ignis. Okay. It's more like a daytime sun than it is, or a flame candle than it is. Um, the, what you've seen of light cantrips, which are kind of bland and pure white. This one has flavor. Okay. But it does light the place as much as like the regular like pure white one. It works. It functions the same way, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, so it's not narrow in here, although the, the growth is thick. Is there a particular marching order or, um, direction, uh, or, or, or lead or, or anything like that as you're moving through? Silas would probably be going first because he can see the farthest. And then I maybe would go Luther. between Silas and Medric because Medric has light and Silas knows where he's going. Yeah, maybe Silas, then Luther, then Annie, then Medrick. Yeah, that works. Okay. Again, it doesn't technically have to be single file, but it gives me some sense of how you're proceeding through uh, with the light at the back in this particular case. All right. Luther, once you pass beyond this stone, um, seems a little less certain. You get the impression that, again, a series of waypoints more than a particular direction. Um, but he starts to to urge you to move, uh, kind of looking for any sort of path. Um, why do we have uh, this as an, as a uh, a task? So this will be a wayfinding task. You'll need four successes before three failures. Difficulty will be ten, but uh, you and you can use different skills. Uh, or sorry, if you use the same skill, it's a disadvantage the second time you use it. Each person must participate, so each of the four of you must consider some way of helping out. Luther's kind of helping out already with the descriptions, which gives you a little bit better of a chance. How are you making your way? And you can be creative in here as well. This is an opportunity for you to inject some details that make sense. Silas is going to use nature because we're looking for certain trees of specific kinds. So he's going to try to use his knowledge of trees, which he is not trained in, but at least he has intelligence uh, to figure out where the next ones likely are. Okay. So as you're moving along. Hey, 11. <laughs> Really uh, as you're moving along, you're noticing the, the character of the forest, trying to understand uh, where the different strand, stands of trees are. The big solid oak trees that were by the edge of the Royal Road quickly give way to a mix of uh, evergreens that, uh, go, that uh, extend further in and kind of noting that change and that shift uh, you also note where the deciduous trees are and where their leaves have already fallen down. And knowing just a little bit about the forest, you figure that the evergreens aren't likely to ever grow together in that arching way. 
Uh, that's just simply the way that they don't they don't function. Whereas the they don't have branches that extend out in that same way. Whereas the the uh, the leaf bearing trees tend to have those side branches. So you turn everything over in that particular direction, uh, and find yourself among those uh, those kinds of trees. It also opens up a little bit as they tend not to grow as close together. Um, you're seeing some motion as well around you, small animals, birds. Uh, raccoons, uh, nothing bigger than, than that uh, kind of moving around you. Who's going to help next? Silas has already helped. It's up to Annie or Medrick to take the next step. Yep. Um. <laughs> I was muted, sorry. <laughs> uh, do. And this will be some sort of action as well as a skill. So kind of consider what how the skill is being used. I can't really think of a skill she has that would be very helpful. But can she start leaving a trail of ball bearings to make sure we're not doubling back on where we, we've been? Okay. Um, let's call that probably survival. As that's a pretty good instinct. It also gives you a trajectory. You kind of know if you're curving off the same path. They're hard to see, but with Medric at the back, a little bit of shine from those ball bearings will probably be seen in the light. Yeah. And she'd be putting them, like, on top of stuff so that... Okay. Uh... So they'll also be not hidden in the undergrowth. Yeah. Oh, that is caught. Oh, that is not much better. That is a 10, though. Okay. And indeed, as you look back, you can kind of see those little little shines, almost like eye shine, uh, around uh, probably as many of them as you can, putting them at head height and in, in trees, balancing them on branches, places you wouldn't normally expect to see any kind of shine at all. It's dim and dull, but it is you can pick it out as you travel behind. The other thing is, you know, this will make that it much easier to get out. That too. But that way, if we do end up getting lost and coming back to this, we know we've already been here. Absolutely. Medric. I'm going to use either insight because Medric would have had to like visions from Ignis before. So he kind of like knows how to interpret, interpret visions. And uh, because Luther mentioned the dead tree, the standing stone, two trees on either side, like, would that be helpful? Like, along with perception just like knowing what to look for basically well you can you can choose one or the other let's go with insight because it's got a higher bonus <laughs> <laughs> it's also an interesting interpretation so i like that so go ahead and roll insight Ooh. there you go so medric as as you're going along in order to use this you're you're talking to luther um, who's kind of focused on looking outward but every once in a while you ask him to describe how exactly did she describe these sorts of things? What was she really saying? And along with the sort of physical things he's picked out, which Luther is very focused on, uh, very much uh, a materialist, if you will, you kind of pick out some of the, the, uh, the additional phraseology, additional words he's saying. Well, the dead tree, it was, you know, aligned with the dead tree so you kind of readjust the path slightly uh the standing stone had a particular lean to it that you realize would be would stand out among the trees if you look at it the right direction and you're able to pick out that that standing stone the stone itself is about eight foot tall it leans at a at, a, at about a probably about an 80 degree angle so it's not quite perfectly up straight uh, and up and down it looks like it may have at one point just looking around the dirt that's disturbed at the bottom Long ago, faded runes also seem to be on the surface. Once you call attention to it, once you actually look at it, you can kind of make out where there are grooves on the surface long covered by dirt and, and, uh, and grime, many of them worn away from must be centuries of rain to have worn that, that smoothly. This once was an important site, uh, but not, uh, not as easily seen anymore. But digging a little bit deeper, taking the words a little bit deeper, taking the, the literal meanings away and looking at the metaphorical meanings, you're able to determine a bit better what Luther's path is actually saying. 
So that's three successes, one more, and you will have found your way through the archway. Who's going to try this one? Silas the turn. Or is Luther and, trying? Anybody can jump in. Luther doesn't have a role in this, other than the fact that he's kind okay. of enabling it by existing. Well, Silas is going to attempt to act like a leader for Luther. He's supposed to be the leader of his people at some point, so... Uh, persuasion? Okay. Uh, there's no leadership skill and there's no diplomacy, so I'm guessing either persuasion or performance, and persuasion's probably more... I mean, or deception or intimidation, depending on what kind of leader you are. <laughs> yeah. I suppose, uh, I don't know so much deception. He's very good at it, but I don't think deception would really apply to leadership in this case. But uh, yeah, he'd go with persuasion. Okay. Out of out of that and intimidation, he's not really intimidating. Ooh. Hey, nineteen. So, as you're going along, and Medric has been kind of teasing out more and more details of the visions. Um, you speak to Luther as well, and as you speak, as the confidence that you put forward starts to uh, wash over him, you see his shoulders grow a little bit more, uh, more square, his back go a little bit straighter, and there's a sense, almost a zeal, in, in the belief that he's now expressing towards you. Make an insight check as well. Oh, this I am not so good at. <laughs> yeah, seven. Okay. I will have Annie and Medric wake one as well. You'll be a disadvantage. Oh. <clears throat> what roll, sorry? Insight. Insight. Good job. Hey, bro. that's not bad. <laughs> Natural one. Oh. So two. So Annie is, is is all about focusing and all about, okay, I know where the path has been. I know where we're, I think we know where we're going. Uh, kind of How come everyone's in dark vision but me? <laughs> um, Nedrick, you've been talking a lot with Luther. By the way. Sorry, what was that? About how many do you think I would have gone through? I have a thousand of them. Um, how often are you putting them down? That will affect how visible they are later. Probably every like 10 steps. Okay. Uh, I'll say that at this point, you've gone through about 50 of them. It's a fair chunk. It's a fair distance into the forest. Medrick, you've been talking to, to Luther and kind of pulling out a little bit of the more detail, kind of getting to know him a little bit more. And as Silas's words of inspiration uh, travel over him, you can see him kind of gaining a little more confidence. His voice quavers a little bit less, even though you can still see there's clearly concern written across his face. It changes ever so, ever so uh, gradually as, as you travel along. And it changes from concern almost to zeal. There's a okay. shift from... There's a shift from I was worried this was important. Did I make the right choice? Is this really what is meant to happen? Two, I made the right choice. This is how this is supposed to happen. Damn straight. <laughs> I've chosen well. I know the future will work out. So the very distinct change in his attitude. So it's kind of like his beliefs. He was doubting his beliefs, and now it's like, oh, I believe this again, kind of. It, yeah, and and also there was there was a question, and the question got answered, and he's satisfied yeah. with the answer. Cool. And sure enough, as as you're walking along, he points out that that's it. Those are the trees, and as he points over, you can see now the archway of these four trees that are formed. And the remains of cobblestones at its uh, feet. Annie, the cobblestones are not entirely dissimilar from the royal road. This was a professionally done and and well done path at one point, 
But up to this point, you hadn't seen any of it. It's like it was completely dug up and to a certain point abandoned. And quite a while ago, judging from how bad this looks. Strange. We're almost there. I, I'm, I'm sure of it now. All right. The next part is going to be dangerous, I think. She wasn't really specific. But there was something she was going to be looking for here. It was important. All right. Did she describe it? No. It was more of... She would know it when she saw it. The dreams so are not sure. The dreams the always vision at that point. Sorry. Okay. So she didn't specify whether it was a vision, something spiritual, or a, phys or, or a physical object. I got the impression it was physical of some kind. It was a real thing. Yeah. It, it just it had to be her. The, she woke up usually at that point, and. and for the first few minutes after waking up, she didn't even remember the dream. It wasn't until later that I found herself sort of repeating some of the words that I, I kind of realized that subconsciously she, she knew it. She knew it under her mind, but not, not as she, she woke. Something, okay. something changed after this morning's wrote the uh, boat ro ride, though. The fishing this morning, not boat ride, what am I thinking? The fishing this morning. I don't know if she saw something out there or, or, or what. But she barely even paused after coming off of the boat. I thought she was going home, but I guess not. And now, now I think this is where she is. Well, hopefully we can find her as quickly as possible. The mother is a ruler of the sea. It would not be unusual for her to, to have seen something while she was out. Well, we better get moving. Mother bless us. And now Mother kind, bless of, us. kind of striding almost in line with Silas, even though he can't see as well as you, there's a confidence that's returned to him. And indeed, walking along the cobblestone path, it's a lot easier to pick your way. Uh, the path is, is wide enough for two, three people, probably even a... a, a a full wagon could have traveled along this path before. It was probably literally a road, but now broken and torn up, it'd be hard pressed to get a, a wagon through the, the the churned up stones. After a few minutes, the road kind of weaves and turns a little bit uh, until you see the remains of a wall on either side. The wall seems to have collapsed inward leaving mostly just the, the guide stones that are there. Um, looking at it as you pass by, you can see the remains of of uh, hinges, metal hinges that were once there. This was once a gated door or a gated pathway at that point. The trees have all grown up thick around them, sometimes even through the stones themselves, further cementing the destruction of whatever this was. I'm around the next turn, and you see... A mound. It sits almost 20, 30 feet high at, at points. Rounded, dirt, covered in trees. But definitely you can distinctly see the rising. And on the edge of the rising, you see the remains of a tower. Broken in half, probably, or maybe even smaller than half. It now extends no more than 20 feet at its highest, but the top is not even. It's broken and, and, uh, and dips and dives around the edge as if it was itself smashed. You hear some voices as you get closer. Um, nothing you can really hear at this particular distance unless you have some sort of special hearing. But you can distinctly make out some voices. Uh, some of them angrier. One of them um, sounds strangely hollow and almost like it's distant. I'm going to try, I'm going to uh, put a hand up in front of Luther, and then I'm going to uh, try to sneakily sneak forward and listen. Okay. Ben, well, exactly. me, go ahead. You're probably better at it than I am. 
Uh, sneaky, sneaky roll. Hey, that's not bad. So Silas is is leaving the group behind and starting to sneak up around the edge of this tower. What are the rest of you doing? Um, yeah, he was only pushing Luther back. So I'm going to get off the main road for like just so I look less obvious. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to try to hide in a bush. <laughs> Same. Okay, Magic. You realize you're still carrying a glowing stone. Yeah, I'll turn that off. Okay, you dismiss the spell. Um, yeah. <laughs> as you dismiss the spell, uh, the light goes out. Uh, Annie, um, your eyes adjust to the suddenly dim light, and you can see the slightly orange-white glow around Medric as he gives off a little bit of light. Uh, what did you say on your, your hiding roll? 14. 14, okay. And Medric? Right, I have to make a hiding roll too, don't I? With disadvantage. Shit, shit. <laughs> That's, yeah, stealth, okay. Oh, that's not bad. That's also, wow. Nice. I'm rolling yeah. better at disadvantage than I normally roll with advantage. <laughs> All right. And Luther manages to, seeing what everyone else is doing, tries to get off the road on the other side and kind of park himself behind a tree, not really knowing what to do next. Um, like, I'll bring my cloak in front of me so it blocks the radiating heat and orange. <laughs> uh, Annie, you notice that, that Medric has managed to kind of hide himself away. Uh, you also realize, especially from your perspective, the Nimbus is not on his skin. It is him. It is an outline of his very being. However... You don't see that. You just see this faintly orange glowing bush on the side of the road. <laughs> it looks completely innocuous. Well, he managed to, to hide himself down. I'm assuming you're not trying to hide from each other. No. <laughs> There's an important distinction there. Um, all right. Uh, Silas, you creep on forward. Uh, the voices become a little bit more distinct. As I said before, one of them seeming more hollow than the rest seeming to almost be like the wind itself forming a voice. Um, let's see. One of the voices actually sounds familiar to you. The last time you heard it was actually at the other temple, or rather the temple, I should say. Um, this is just a building. But the uh, long ago when you were encountering the temple, there were a number of people inside. One of them was barking mm -hmm. orders to the rest. And that voice sounds familiar. You hear it there uh, saying, this seems ridiculous. Why are we here after one girl? It's important. We need to make sure that what she finds falls into the right hands. Fine. It shouldn't be so hard to kill one person after all. No, remember. We need her alive. There, and it pauses. <laughs> go, now. There's someone else here. I've got to go greet our guests. And you hear the sound of, of uh, footsteps on stone, kind of on the other side of this this stone tower. Now, the other voice that was speaking is the hollow sounding one. Yes. Is it male or female? Um, maleish. Okay. I will uh, sneak back to where I left them. Okay. They're gone. They're completely invisible to your eyes. I'm just kidding. Huh. I go stand by the orange glowing bush and try and figure out where everyone is. <laughs> no, I presume when, uh, when you come back, they, they let themselves be seen by you, at least. Yeah, I yeah. whisperingly call out, like, uh, any better. Luther. What? <laughs> I whisper. Uh... 
I heard two things in there, but I think one of them noticed me. Um, you remember the temple that Catherine was in? There was the the leader, the guy who summoned the weird tentacle thing to fight us. Uh, he was there talking with something that sounded like a hollow voice. Uh, those are the only two I heard, but then I think it, I think it, whatever the hollow voice sensed me, uh, and said that it would come handle us and that he had to, uh, go, uh, go kidnap, um, Mira. Uh, they seem to know that she's there and they need to get what she is looking for. We have so to. We need to make sure they're prepared. Sorry, Nash. So we need to make sure they don't get what she's looking for. Uh, yeah, we've got to make sure they don't get her. But what? Uh, whoever it is with the strange voice seems to be coming out after us. So we're probably going to have to deal with them first. All right. And as that, I do grab hold of vice. I don't take it out of its, its sheath, but I'm holding it. Okay. Um, so what do we do now? Says Luther. I think we go in. Or should we wait for the thing with the hollow voice to come here? That way we can fight them one at a time. I think it intends on fighting us one at a time anyways. The other guy ran in, ran further in, I think. It sounded like it. I don't know how you do this, Annie. Um, but I... I I think we're we're working against time, so I think we've got to go. Uh, hopefully, we can. Go be able to... All right, let's go. Okay, so what are you doing? Well, clicking my cloak behind me again, not using it to hide. Yeah, it already it already it already yeah. seemed to tell I was there, so I'm just going to run in. Yeah, they, we don't. <laughs> So, okay. What was that? We we don't have the element of surprise, so there's no point trying to sneak up on them. Yep. All right. Well then, we might as well switch to. It's dark. I'm scared of dark. Different map. If I've done this correctly, most of the map should be hidden from you. Yes. Um, Yep. Okay. Yeah. At the very bottom, there's a thing strip. Yep. And you can see the three of you plus Luther. <laughs> um, okay. And there's a set of. Well, it looks like a tower section. Maybe stairs. Yep. So what you can't see right now that that section would be effectively a mound of of uh, of dirt. So even if you, uh, I would I would ask that you not move there on the map because it'll reveal. I think <laughs> depending on how he goes. But essentially, it's it's the it's the uh, the the crumbly uh, dirt hill, whereas the yeah. place where he was essentially is that that tower at the very end, or seems to be. All right. Um, and so you'll you'll approach uh, just at a full a full clip. It sounds like Luther will try to keep up yep. with you. Just going to go ahead and move everybody down that way. Actually, can everybody check to make sure you can move your icon to make sure I've got those set up properly? Yep. I can move mine, and I cannot move anyone else's. Yep. And Edric is almost dead. Yeah, that should be not six. Yeah, if you want to <laughs> correct your hit points, that was uh, from the previous battle. Make sure that your hit points and resources are set up again. I think I might have to... Uh, uh, yes, Silas is not uh, not set up at all. No. Nope. There we go. <clears throat> all right. So I'm just going to move okay. you guys along a little bit here as you come charging towards the the tower. The tower itself tower. seems to be half you buried. The, uh, your map. Oh yeah, so look at that. That's probably uh -huh. a good idea. No, the the player map uh, was invisible. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> For those of you watching at home, 
you're all caught in the oh. darkness and uh too bad uh, I okay uh, are you all moving essentially as one group or are any of you hanging back or are you moving quickly what's the the idea if you're just running around then I would ask you put yourself in this approximate percent vicinity. So go ahead and put yourself in the appropriate area. Luther will be one of the people that's running. Oops, I didn't mean to grab everybody. And he probably gets there first. If she wants to. Actually, I'm going to stay in the back of the group. Okay. Silas would probably be close to the front. Nedra too. Okay. And Luther is kind of caught up in the moment and, and running as fast as he can. His hands are, are balled up, fists ready to go. Uh, as you come around that corner, a blanket of darkness descends in the area. We'll just uh, kind of draw that on. If I can find the right button. There we go. to draw it with red but that's just meaning the edges of it so you can kind of see where the edges are that was not supposed to be a square yeah it kind of defaults to square yeah or rectangular and now i can't seem to select it you need to make sure you're pressed you're using the select tool yep i am oh right. are you on the right player uh, i am I think I got it that time. There we go. Oh, I accidentally deleted uh, Silas. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There we go. I'm going to move back. Yeah. Something tried to delete me. All right. I'm going to move to another layer just to make it easier for that. All right. If you pre press Alt, I think it makes a circle. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. All right. So there are Alt or Control. Alt it is. Okay. okay. Just to kind of see where this edge of darkness appears. And it appears not just as a big globe or glob. It, it almost appeal, appears like a, uh, a curtain uh, shimmering and moving. Uh, and from within that darkness, um, you hear a voice. Hold. You shall go no further. And can I have each of you make a charisma saving throw? That sheet. There we go. Yeah, too many sheets. Eighteen. Is that magic? It is magic. Twenty-four. Twenty-one. Wow, <laughs> it's a good day for you guys. Um, as all of you feel the edge of the effect coming on, to, on you, uh, while the voice is menacing, the magical effect seems to find no, no landing. Uh, even, uh, Medrick, as you glance over towards Luther, uh, you can see the steely resolve he has brought on not only by the, the, the target of this particular travel, but also quite clearly by the zeal he has for Silas's mission. Uh, however, none of you are frightened. Good. I warn you all, you know not what you interfere with, children of power. Do we see where, where the voice is coming from? No, it seems to be coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. Uh... Yeah. Um, I'm going to say uh, there are far worse things in the night than you. And I'm going to shillelagh my staff and reach out for the wall edge and try to follow it around. Okay. Um, what does the, the staff look like when you shillelagh it? Basically normal. I mean, it's it's just a, a minor spell, but uh, 
Uh, I think it looks a little more covered in scales. Okay. I kind of like the idea. Probably fish scales than dragon scales. Okay. I kind of like the idea that there's sort of that that uh, that shimmering CGI effect of it of it sort of folding these scales out of nowhere onto the surface of it as you start to make your way around. Once you enter that that edge of darkness, it is completely dark. There, dark vision does, does nothing for you at this point. Not at this point, but I have an uh, invocation later to get. Sure. Um, <laughs> So we will roll initiative just to kind of keep things a little more organized here. Give me a second to bring up the initiative tracker and let me reset it. Uh, there we go. Okay. Man. Now that it's been reset, make sure that you select your icon before hitting the the, uh, the initiative button just to make sure that it... Oops. I got a six. I got 11, but I didn't select my icon. <laughs> I can add them manually, but I don't want to have to do it every every time if possible. Okay, I'll remember next time. Uh, I'm just going to add one for Luther. Uh, and we'll reset it to 11 out of 10. And uh, Medrick got an 11, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, do we have uh, do we have one from uh, Silas at six point twelve? I rolled a natural one, so six. Or no, more than that. Never mind. Uh, so nine. <laughs> okay, so I ended up adding them all manually. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't. I can't use the dice roller. No, it's just kind of funny that I was I was hoping to <laughs> to save time, and it's like, well, nope. Silly human, because uh, I also have to add in. Uh, um, let's do it this way. There we go. Uh, and I have to roll for them. If if you go by by clicking our token, it'll actually I'll be able. I can put the thing. You just have to write. Oh yeah, I can do that too. Yeah, I forgot about that. Good tip. All right, and that one is. Because then I can just add my number in. Good point. Okay. So that is the most clustered I've I've seen uh, initiative in a long time. <laughs> I mean. No, 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 no. We had all twelves last a couple weeks ago. I suppose. Well, we had all twelves and eleven. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is weird. Uh, I guess technically, statistically speaking, that, that I don't know if that makes any sense actually. So. Um, at the beginning, uh, there is a statement from the creature, the, the person, the whatever in front of you that you cannot see. Um, you must not interfere. If you interfere, all is lost. And that will be aimed at Silas. Wow. <laughs> I can see how this is going to go for me. Uh, you can hear, uh, actually, Silas as the, the voice kind of reverberates through the, 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 the shadow around you as well, coming from all sides. Um, you get the impression that it was meant to be uh, frightening or at the very least uh, uh, concerning. What it comes across, though, strangely to you, is there's almost an edge of desperation, uh, of concern, of 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 how how dangerous this would be. So that was their turn. Oops. Oops, didn't mean to move the world. Sorry. Oh yeah, I hate when I do that. Mm -hmm. um, Silas would just say, "She's my cousin." I will not let you have her. Okay. That is uh, that is his turn, Medric. I'll go into the darkness. Okay. Uh, go ahead and move yourself in. It swallows you up utterly, and uh, movement through this is either difficult terrain, uh, or you will have to make uh, a perception check at disadvantage to move through. 
Okay, so I was here, so that's one step. So that means I have two squares left. Uh, if your normal movement was six, then yeah, kind of. Yeah, basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll move here and I'll just take a swing around me to see if there's anything there. Okay, roll with disadvantage. <laughs> I'm not really expecting to hit anything, but wait, what's my jig? In case you can hear this nope. at home, uh, it is it is mid November and someone is mowing their lawn outside. This is a bizarre year. But why? <laughs> so I got a fifteen and a nineteen. Okay, roll which damage. Is surprising. What? Oh shit! I actually hit something. Nice. Ha! Nice. Uh, as you swing wildly into the darkness, the uh, what is this? The mace? Yeah, uh, Warhammer, but with well, Warhammer. one-handed. Right. So you swing it kind of wildly around you, and it connects solidly. You feel that that satisfied uh, uh, motion until the reverberations go up the edge of the. Uh, the handle, and you feel your own arm kind of getting a little bit shaken, and you hear the sound the of of the stone cracking where you hit the wall <laughs> beside you. All right, no. well, now I know where it is, so I'm going to put my hand on the wall so I can follow it next turn. Okay. Hey, look, a hit is a hit. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. That's very fair. Uh, Luther's up next. Uh, Luther will be, if I can get the right layer. There we go. Um, Luther will be kind of moving in. Let's see here. Duke. And just gets to the edge of the darkness. And uh, calls out, I don't care who you are. I have to find my wife. And kind of lost in the shadow. And, and from your perspective, Andy, seeing all of them enter, it is though they have walked behind a wall. You cannot see them at all. Even Medric, with his glow, seems to have been swallowed up by this. Fucking weird, man. Also, just a reminder that things do not have advantage against me uh, because they are unseen by me. Yep. Okay, because of my alert the... feet. Right, okay. Yep. So, if, if I can't see them, they don't get advantage. Good um, reminder. Thank you. Well, uh, I am going to go one, two, I'm going to hug this wall. And if I do that, can I follow the wall with my hand? You can indeed. Cool. Does that help with navigating in there? Uh, it means you're no longer moving at, uh, at uh, uh, difficult terrain. Until you bump into Medrick. <laughs> was going to mention it until she actually did, but yes, that would also be a problem. Yep. Uh, so then I have 10 feet left. I can get there. And that's all my movement. Um, literally, you put your hand forward and you feel Medric's back, but you still didn't see it. And Medric, someone touched you on your back. You didn't hear them at all. What the hell? Medric? Any? The voices are okay. faint, but just because you're beside each other, you actually can hear each other. Okay. Weird man. Yeah, let's follow the wall. Um, can I... Am I able to use the dash act action as a held action? No. Because you're using it as a bonus. If you, or sorry, I sh let me to step, step back because I was thinking of a, of a rogue who can do that as a bonus action. If you hold your action, you can do that at whatever yes. action it is uh, as a held action. And one of them can be dashed. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Uh, so, I have my hand, one hand on the wall, one hand on Medric's back. Um, when Medric moves, I'm going to continue to go forward against the wall. Okay. All right. So as far as I can go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, and, 
Do you have uh, a bonus yeah. action or? I mean, I'm guessing that I, d I don't know how magic works. So I'm going to try to like hug the wall as much as possible. I don't know. There's, there's nothing really I can do with a bonus. I don't think. Okay. Most actions. people can't. So you actually have a few options normally that, that people don't. So don't worry about not having one. <laughs> Most people don't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll actually, uh, because I'm right beside Medric, I'll uh, talk to him and I'll, I'll be like, okay, we've, we've got this and give him advantage. Okay. Advantage of following the wall and not tripping over my own feet. Yeah. <laughs> because I can do that as a bonus. I'm going to try to guide him. Okay. You get some words of encouragement after the accidental bumping into the back. Uh, Medric, Silas. Uh, okay. Did I hear Luther speak? Uh, yes, because he's right on the edge of everything. Okay. It was faint even then, but you did hear it. Then I'm going to move in that direction and then just uh, say, Luther, grab onto my staff. We must meet up with the others. And I'll move my staff around slowly around me in that direction, hoping to uh, touch him with it. Make sure you don't chill alien him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, make a perception check with disadvantage. Jeez, I, you guys. Hey. Wow, this is wow. amazing. Uh, yeah, no problem at all. You're able to kind of feel around, and when you hit something soft, you kind of hold on to it, um, and you feel the other end of the, the staff being being held, even though you still can't even see to the end of your staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then... Uh, hmm... I suppose that was my action to do that, wasn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Well, then uh, I'll just tell Luther uh, to wait and we'll move forward together. So that hopefully he will uh, delay his normal action so we can actually both move at the same time. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, and um, uh, no, that's all I got. Okay. All right. Uh, at, the, at the other end, you hear Luther respond, I'll follow you, Silas. I'll follow you. And moving to them. I can't let you proceed. I have too many plans that are too important for this sort of interference. All of you make Can dexterity saving throws. Sorry, what was that, no. Medric? We actually hear the voice. <laughs> you hear the voice very distinctly coming from okay. everywhere. Everywhere in the darkness. Is this magic? This is magic. 19. 16. 8 Wait, did you say had advantage? Or no? No, that was that was uh um Silas's thing. Okay. And I will roll for Wow, you guys are doing great. That's amazing. All right. So, for let's see. I think I think actually Medric was the only one who failed. Uh, so Medric takes thirteen points of piercing yeah. damage. Everyone else takes takes half. Is all the darkness around you turns effectively to glass, and the shards pierce through all of you. 
Okay, so that's six damage for the rest of us. I'm, I can't let you through. That is, however, the end of their turn. Okay, well, this has done me an angry. <laughs> so Medrick will scream, and his eyes will go red with fire, and he will cast Glory of Midday. It won't do any damage, but it will clear the uh, darkness. Nice. Nice. So describe to me what Glory of Midday looks like in this context. Well, nobody sees the fire eyes or the fire outline to begin with, but then there's little pinpricks of light appearing from the entire darkness area, and then, oof, solar flare, and dar the darkness is gone. All right. And I take... What level is Glory of Midday again? Uh, if it's a channel divinity, then it's not a spell. Oh, okay, so I take no damage. Right. All right. Cool, As cool. this this fiery ball cool. of fire sort of surrounds what any you had noticed the small nimbus oh. before, it now kind of expands outward, kind of moving across it. it. You can feel the heat of it. It is like a like walking through a sunbeam on a bright sunny day. It has that tangible feeling on your skin. And as you notice, this sort of glass-like shimmering shards of, of uh, shadow around you uh, sort of break and smash, and you hear that audible sound almost of the literally the shattering of that darkness as it, uh, as it swoops across this area. Uh, that does no damage, that we said? Yeah, because if it's a channel divinity, it's not a spell. No, no. The, does the channel divinity do, do damage? I can't remember. Oh, it does, yeah. Oh, I just leave the background. Let me double check. Silly thing. Why does it do that? Each hostile creature within 30 feet must make a con save. If they failed, it's 2d6 plus 5. And they're blinded. Okay. Just trying to make sure. I don't know if I can get rid of that stupid thing. <sighs> I am so but frustrated with the Oh, really? All right, there we go. <laughs> Uh, there we go. That's so, shitty wow. damage. For the first time, you guys have rolled something uh, not perfect. That's that's fine by me. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I rolled a one on initiative. <laughs> I mean, that, that true, although... You still didn't go last. Yeah. You, <laughs> uh, okay, first of all, that appears. Uh, it wasn't that far from you. Uh, and what save was it? Sorry. Constitution. Okay. okay. So, um, and what is that? Was a what the thirteen difficulty? Okay, so it passed that. Yeah. What was the effect? Is there any effect on passing? Yeah, he doesn't get blinded. Okay. Okay. As the light passes over, though, and this smashing of light occurs. At the very center of all of that light, uh, as it washes over, you do see a shimmering shape uh, of, of still that same sort of, uh, uh, more like a, a black curtain or a, or a black robe uh, floating partly up in the air uh, as it reels back its, its, uh, its arms and uh, screams in, in, uh, in annoyance and pain, I guess. Not really pain, more annoyance uh, as it washes over. No! You cannot undo this. Oh, yes, we can. And that was your, your I'll action. Go. I'll move right here. Okay. Uh, Annie, uh, as your With reaction, hammer ready. As your reaction, you can move as well. Yes. Um. You now have more options. Than what I you will. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll stay where I am. Okay. I won't use it. Fair enough. Uh, Medric, you move up closer to this this thing, and as you move closer, there is—I uh, don't have the appropriate icon for it—but as you move closer within this 
this form, this vague humanoid form that seems to still sort of shimmer in its own uh, its own wave of like like a, a, a piece of cloth caught in the wind. Uh, and as you move closer, you notice that within the darkness of the head, the only thing visible are two small diamond-shaped uh, lights that pierce that darkness. All right. And that's this your action and move. Do you have a bonus action you'd like to do? Uh, is this a bonus action? Just a sec. Wait, let me look at my character thing, which is on roll 20. And I forgot to get a mouse because... Yeah. <laughs> I have one for you if you want to. I know. <laughs> for, for those of you playing the LOTDI bingo, that is the under the mentions not having a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> Can the uh, shield of Ignis be activated on a bonus action? Okay. The wielder may use a bonus action on their turn to attack with the shield, or is that once it's already lit up? That's once it's already available. Um, All right. Well, I'm going to light that up right now. Okay. As the, the fire kind of explodes from the small miniature version of the shield out to its full size... Uh, that that glow, that nimbus that uh, Annie noticed before is a little bit brighter. All right. Medrick has taken a big, bold step forward. Uh, Luther, holding on to the end of your staff, now can see and sees this thing and doesn't know what to make of it and says, What is that thing? Who are you? What are you doing this for? Uh, his questions fall apparently on deaf ears, at least at the moment. Any? You're muted. Another point for the bingo. Well, I don't want to get the thing, so I'm going to take my short bow out and shoot at it. Okay. That is cocked. Uh, of course it is. It's a bow. Yeah. Uh, that is a 14 plus 6, so 21. That's definitely a hit. Uh, so 1d6 for the damage, and then I believe it's 3d6 for sneak attack. Uh, at your level, I believe so. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, 5, two, seven, 2, 9, 3, 12... Plus three, so 15. For a moment there, I thought you were yeah, saying 312, and then, okay. Uh, Andy, no, I was, I was not so loud. No. Oh, so 5, 2, 2, 3, 12 plus 3 is 15. Okay. The arrow passes through it, but does seem to tatter some of the, uh, the, uh, creature as it passes through. But it was a very definitely a solid hit. Kind of probably in the torso area, right? The solid, the, the, the most dense shadow that's there. Cool. And uh, beside you, Medrick, you do hear a small uh, grunt of, of pain, essentially. Mm. It's, it's not really a grunt so much as sort of an inarticulate surprise. Uh, that's your action, Annie. You have bonus or uh, move. Yes, um, I will. Um, that's the wrong button. Um, six. Uh, I will go here, and I will. Um, try to get its attention by yelling, so you're the one who who bothered me in my sleep, uh, to try to give advantage to the next hit. Okay. It's like, oh, you're going to get it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you... Uh, it's, it's, it's... Remind me about how that works. It is, it is the target. Anyone going against the target gets the advantage, or is it a specific person gets... The advantage. You can use the help action as a bonus action. When you use the help action to aid an ally in attacking a creature, the target of the attack can be within 30 feet of you uh, if it can see or hear you. Okay, so you do have to pick a particular person to give that bonus to. Uh, I'll give it to Medrick because he's standing yeah. beside it then. Okay. All right. Medrick's the mightiest. 
Yep. Just wanted to make sure that I got that, that I understood exactly how that worked. Okay. Uh, Silas, you saw Annie fire off an arrow that went on through it and then call out uh, in some recognition, apparently. Um, okay. I say, uh, Luther, stay behind me. We don't know what this can do. And then uh, Silas will step a little bit ahead to make sure he stays between the two. And uh, he's going to... Oh, it's not on that sheet. Sure, Lily. He's going to use an ability. A spell-like ability. Uh, he's going to use uh, Bewitching Voice, which is otherwise known as Suggestion, which he can do once per day. Uh, and he is going to... Uh, also, if uh, this counts as a charm, so if it can't be charmed, this isn't going to work at all. Uh, but uh, he looks over at the spirit-looking thing and uh, says, you know, if you want us to leave, you should tell us what you're doing here and what you're after. Okay. And what's the save difficulty? Difficulty 14, uh, wisdom save. Okay. Um, Annie and Medrick, both of you note an extraordinary change in Silas's voice. As he yes, utters it's more this, sibilant. Uh, it's sibilant, and there's a secondary voice that's almost not heard echoing his own, uh, almost as though his voice is not entirely just coming from him. Uh, the voice seems to slide almost uh, around and gets into you, it's kind of one of those, actually, I think, Marie, you were describing earlier how there was a sound that when you put your headphones on, you could hear that sound. It was sort of almost <laughs> sub-audible, uh, and yet you kind of knew it was there. That's the feeling you get from this command that he's just issued towards this creature. Uh, you hear from behind you, um, Silas, a bit of a gasp from Luther as well as he hears that same voice. Um, you feel the magical command go out, but you don't feel the usual effect settling in on the target. Uh, but you do hear back from uh, the, the creature. Why would I share my plans with you since you seem so intent on disrupting everything I do? Uh, that was your move. You still have some movement left. It was your action or a bonus. Yeah, I'll move over here in case it'll... Uh help keep it away from Luther and aid Medrick or something. Uh, and then just bonus action, he'll just recharge the staff. Okay. Is that a... He'll just do that every time he's got a bonus action just to make sure it doesn't run out. That is a, uh, a cantrip, right? Yep. Okay. Cool. I keep forgetting if it's a cantrip. It's been a long time. Uh, all right. Um, kind of responding to... Annie and uh, Silas both uh, now, uh, because Annie's made a big point of, of kind of um, calling him out. Um, I offered you aid, and I would offer you advice. There are bigger things going on here that you would best not be part of. But do not forget. I warned you. He's going to disengage and move. If any of you have ways to negate or, or react to disengage, then certainly can do so. Nope. Uh, he flows kind of around Medric. It feels a little bit weird. Uh, and I can't just like shield bash him. You know? <laughs> unfortunately, with disengage, it's very careful yeah. about, uh, about that. Uh, but then he kind of moves around the edge of the tower. Not quite with out, outside of view, but uh, definitely moving away. I'll chase him. When it's, it's my turn. It is your turn. One, two, three, four. Where do you think you're going? Wait, just let me modify my hit I took earlier. And I will swing the hammer at him. Okay. At advantage. Hey. Yes, actually. Two hands and hands. It's only my proficiency bonus for two hit, right? 
uh, your proficiency bonus and your strength bonus. Okay. Wait. Okay. So it's at six now. Nice. It felt a little high. Oh. Wow. You do have advantage. At advantage. <laughs> okay, that's a lot better. That's, that's much better, yeah. Oh, uh, that, I don't know why that rolled. I, I probably just touched the trackpad without meaning to. Okay, well, we'll take the first two. Um, the first one, yeah. you were on you were on the way and then kind of realizing you were a little close to the, the side of the tower, kind of flinched a little bit, not wanting to okay. collide with the tower once more. Uh, and mm -hmm. also with uh, the, the, the additional distraction that Annie had provided in, in it, uh, you do manage to collide with it. Your, uh, your, Boom. your much damage. weapon does go through it. It does not feel very substantial, uh, but it does seem to have affected it as it went through. Uh, which, um, remind me, this is the Warhammer? Yeah. Is that a magic weapon? No. I don't think so. Okay. The effect of fire is just for show. <laughs> okay. Uh, as it does pass through it without leaving, without kind of colliding with anything, uh, it, it feels as little as the, uh, almost as though you're fighting smoke at this point. Okay. And as a bonus action, I will bash it with a shield. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is a miss. No. As the uh, as it sort of gathers its its uh, shadowy tendrils and kind of shapes itself away from it. Uh, that's Medric's turn. Luther. Uh, Luther is going to. Seeing everyone running after it, he's going to do the same. Uh, he's not quite as fast as everybody else is. Oh, actually. No, he'll only manage to kind of run up around the around the corner. Uh, he's let go of your staff at this point. Again, his hands are balled up and he's ready to fight. Uh, that's his turn. Annie, you're up. Well, um, most I can really do. I will go here and I will shoot him again with the, the short bow. Okay. That's a natural 16, so 22. Yeah, oh yeah. If I start introducing uh, AC 23 creatures against you, then it'll be a very bad day for you guys. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's like, all right, you know what? Take us advice and leave. <laughs> four plus four, eight. Uh, so that's a 12. Again, I have to translate. I keep thinking 316. Oh my God, you guys are. Oh, wait, no. Okay, yeah. Uh, once again, the arrow does go right on through, uh, but it does seem to. Some damage. Some damage. Some damage definitely applied. Uh, and I will keep talking to him. I'm like, why would I take advice from someone who's as sketchy as you? Why would I accept your help? You've done nothing to show it, make me have any confidence in you. Okay. The insults keep flowing. That's awesome. Uh, and he'll respond on his turn. But Silas, it is your turn. It is I, but Silas. <laughs> we'll run up to there and whack him with my staff. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, you're not able to, to land on anything solid. You think you do, and it reforms itself just out of the way. Okay. It's hard to judge distance with something that's as dark as night. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got nothing. That's it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Fools. 
Do you even know what is happening here? How this miserable little town has become the center of this battle? This is the last stand, and it must end. But the cracks in the world here are strong and attract power from all sides. Um, we who are ever vigilant, destined to see all, now forced to impose ourselves to act and disturb these waters. I am benevolent. It will once again disengage. Actually, yeah, it's going to have to. Uh, oh, it's nice to see that my suggestion spell worked. <laughs> and it vanishes. Now, when it vanishes inside, um, you can see this opening that's right here. Oops, that's why I just the right button. Uh, see this opening right here. As you come around the tower, you realize that the tower itself is, is mostly destroyed inside. There are some stairs that would lead up to, to upper levels. But where it vanished was actually through um, a closed set of, of, uh, of uh, looks like wooden doors that have been built a long time ago, so they're mostly uh, ragged. But it didn't open the doors, it just sort of flowed through. And the doors are set sort of at a 45 degree angle to the floor, as if entering into a cellar. And it vanished beyond those. Uh, let's see. Medrick, you're up. So I will go towards the door and kick it down. Okay, make it a strength check. Wow. It's a pull. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull the door as a bonus. As you kind of kick downward, some splinters fly off of this thing, and then you realize, oh, wait, all of the weight is kind of pushing downward on the met on the, the stone frame that's around it. So you actually kicked it in its strongest possible point, and the hinge just managed to hold, and you kind of sheepishly bend down and just pull the easily pull the doors open. But that is your action. Okay. Actually, wait, let me do a thing. I was going to be like, I'll pull it angrily, but I guess that's, it just like barely opened. You get a splinter in your finger. It's kind of... Ow. <laughs> the door comes off. It wasn't actually a pull. It was just sitting there. It's actually, it's all an illusion. I have like one more, spe one more space of move movement though as well, like shamefully go forward. Okay. As you step onto the, the, the edges, you, you see these well-worn uh, stone steps that lead downward. Um, the little bit of light that comes off of your nimbus, the little bit of light that you can see by, reflects on the surface of water down a few steps from where you are. It seems to extend up the hallway. Um, Luther comes charging around Is the corner. Annie? No, Luther before Annie. Okay. All right. Um, comes charging around the corner and doesn't really know what to make of the situation. Where did it go? Where is that bastard? Annie. Uh, did I see it go down? Uh, you, you, you roughly saw its direction, and then with Medric, kind of when he went towards the area, you heard the big bang, and then the <laughs> slightly less, bang. slightly less bang from the doors opening. And the screech. <laughs> So, uh, 25 feet I can get here. Uh, where's the door? So the door is basically in front of where Medric is now. I'm going to open up some of the lighting here so that you guys can see. Um, ignore this icon because it's not actually right there, but um, <coughs> what Medric can make out is now this underground tunnel. All right. So the door is right, like, on this diagonal? Uh, basically where Medrick is standing. Okay. Uh, and he hasn't gotten it open. He, he managed to kind of pull the door open. I was being kind. Yeah. Okay. But I think he uh, walked in one, two. Yeah. Uh, one step, yeah. Yeah. So that is 25. That makes 30. Um, I will... I might as well dash as a bonus. Uh, so I can go here. What do I see from here? 
Okay. Uh, you take another step down the stairs, and you see before you a dim hallway. Uh, a little bit of light, again, glowing from uh, from Medric, uh, reveals that the, the floor of this is covered in water. Um, and from the sounds of the way that it echoes down the hallway, it sounds deep, or at least deeper than just a, a splash of water. Um, you won't uh, know until you I step will... into it. Sorry? Because of ice... I will take vice out of its sheath because I believe it does cast some light. Because uh, this is darkness, it, right? It glows slightly. I forget if it actually has light. Except in complete darkness where it glows bright as a torch. So. It will be complete darkness once you get into the, the hallway. Okay. Uh, and I will then try to move forward. That was how much? That was 10 feet, so I have another 20. Hmm. Um, oh, there it is. I will move another. Um, I will move here. And he's not there, right? So. Right, you don't see him. Yeah. Shouldn't see him there now, so. but I, I messed up trying to change layers. <laughs> there, that should put him in the right place. Nope, that didn't do it. There we go. Buttons. Uh, and as you walk through, you note that the water is about a foot deep. Very still, very cold, and slightly rank. Um, Silas. Uh, let's see. I, I will, by the way, that, that was my move and my bonus. Uh, I'll hold an attack with advice if something comes up. Okay. And yes, at this particular point, the distance away from all the light, um, Vice is glowing quite strongly now. Uh, so it was one move, and Silas will use his action to move. Yeah, I'll just move up there. Okay, and again, it's the, the water's about a foot deep, and you're sort of sloshing through it. It's not inhibiting you at all, but it is pretty cold. Yep. Yeah. Okay. At this point, we'll drop out of initiative, <coughs> as it is quite clear that wherever this thing has gone, it is no longer here in front of you. Well, we better move as fast as we can. Yes. That bastard got away. That's your, uh, your, that's vice. That, that is the light of a torch. All right. I think it, oh. it it's moonlight, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it to blue. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I will start to reveal areas. We're no longer in initiative, so don't have to worry about specific accounts. But uh, as you move uh, down, you see the hallway ends in a pair of large doors. Uh, these doors seem to be made out of, of sculpted stone. Um, they seem to have uh, small crystals embedded within them of symbology that, unless any of you are trained in religion, I think somebody is, um, does not look significant. Is anybody trained yeah, in, religion? in religion? Okay, make a religion check. All right, we'll move up to the doors and. Wow. Zip up there. It's only a plus two because it's an intelligence skill. <laughs> eh, 14. Okay. I'm going to choose the right thing as Luther's keeping pace with all of you. 
Uh, the other thing to note about the doors is the water is actually flowing through the doors as the bottom half seemed to be made with slats to allow, perhaps to allow water to pass back and forth. Um, the specifics of this religion, you're not really sure. The iconography is not familiar to you. Um, but there is something about the way this door is made, uh, almost as though it is uh, attempting to, to show respect to show caution and to show um, uh, age and time passing. The way you look at it, Medric, um, this would, your people don't do this practice, but you do know of other uh, religious groups who venerate their dead by putting them in tombs. And this is kind of what that looks like, a tomb door. It's closed at the moment, uh, and these heavy uh, stone doors seem to be Probably somebody tries it. They seem to be stuck, or they seem to be not moving on their own. Maybe even locked. I'll let, everybody, hmm? Maybe I'll let people know that this is a tomb. <laughs> yeah, um, does Silas recognize any of the icono iconography? Are you trained in religion? Nope. Is this one to see if it's similar to anything in the Mother Hydra stuff? It does not resemble the Mother Hydra's uh, symbols. Does it resemble any of the symbols on the artifacts that we got from Cathron? Because I rolled high on the, those. Hmm. I would say yes, they, it does. There are certain motifs which seem to be similar to that. And thinking back on it, there's there are although it's it's shaped differently the you're starting to recognize similarities between this and the temple that surrounded where Cathron was um, but they're they're different it's it's like they're related more like cousins than than uh, than blood or a closer relation does it seem to be any locking mechanism on this door uh, make a perception check as you start looking around for a locket or a hook. Uh, the 15. 15? There does appear to be some sort of locking mechanism uh, in the way that the, the stones are, are built onto the front. Some of them do seem to be mobile uh, and looks like it can be uh, locked and unlocked. Um, it'll take you a moment to do so, but you can pull out your lock picks and give okay. it a try. Uh, yeah. Uh, does, uh, in that, do I see anything suspicious either? Like any traps? Uh, nothing stands out to, to you as, as a, a trap. You recognize the mechanism was there and it doesn't seem like the mechanism, once you kind of notice that it's there, it doesn't actually seem like it's that complicated a mechanism. The fact well, that it's... I will try, I will try to open it. Try to lock back it. Well, that's a 19 plus 9. Very good. So 28. So, so you might want to move that on the main screen. Oh, uh, thank you very much. I'm still not used to, <laughs> to, to see both of those. Uh, yes, as, uh, as uh, uh, you all see Annie kind of walk up to the door, kind of studying a little bit, mentioning something probably about the fact that, huh, this kind of looks like that other place, but not quite like that other place, and pulls out some tools, starts running her fingers over the over the uh, the contours of the door. It is sculpted in that there are three-dimensional contours and, and uh, nice uh, almost wave-like patterns that, tr that travel around, but nothing particularly iconic, more that it's it's uh, it's uh, simple symbolic. Uh, and the little little glints that come off of the, the light that... Uh, that's provided by vice of um, little small crystals embedded within the stone from time to time. But you watch her as she kind of traces her fingers over the, over the areas, then kind of tucks her finger in slightly behind one of the waves and kind of moves the wave slightly. The whole thing kind of shifts. There's a, a sound of stone kind of turning on stone inside. And then there, it reveals a, uh, another small area at which point uh, she pulls out the, uh, the the tools that she has, kind of shoves them into the space, tweaks a little bit, and then there's an ever so gentle as the uh, click as the as the mechanism inside releases. And then I put them back in my hair. 
<laughs> cool. Cool. And I'll grab the door and like, pull this time. It's a push. No, I'm just kidding. The entire time I'm holding my in, in my mouth, like, as a light. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, as you open up the doors, it reveals a fairly large room. This room is, uh, I don't have furniture for it. I didn't have time to add furniture to the map, I'm afraid. Uh, this is a, a pre, uh, pre-manufactured map that I found that was pretty handy. Um, but uh, it reveals a fairly large room. Uh, the light is hard to see by, even with the, the light of vice and the slight amount of glow. Um, Silas, you're able to see the room pretty clearly. Uh, Luther is struggling to see just about anything. Uh, but what you do make out is uh, a, a, a room full of uh, essentially rubble. Uh, it looks as though this room once contained statues or um, possibly monuments. There looked like there was the remains now only splinters, but of benches and tables. Uh, all of that, however, um, slightly floating a little bit in the water, which continues to be in this room. Uh, but also uh, uh, crumbled and collapsed as most of the room uh, is uh, uh, just shatters of rock that have fallen down from the ceiling. Uh, the, the statues themselves have all been destroyed. Uh, and it, 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 the word destroyed comes to mind just because it looks like the, the damage was more deliberate than it was uh, uh, accidental. You can see where rocks have fallen from the ceiling. It looks as though this room is full of rubble, and the, the rubble kind of sometimes rises up out of the water, uh, piling down upon the floor. So consider this entire room to be essentially difficult terrain as you kind of pick your way over it. Uh, you do, however, make out uh, just on the edge uh, of uh, the light given off from Vice. Uh, it looks like uh, two people lying down on the ground. That uh, lighter circle is the, the dim light. The what? I'm not sure if everybody sees that. No, I I don't see it at all. I think you have to. But that's it. fine. Like, Silas sees it all, anyways. Yeah. Um. It's 20 feet from for me of bright light and 40 feet of dim light. Let's see okay. If I can change the visibility. There we I go. Seconds. There you go. I got the I got it there, so it should be visible by everybody now. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yep. So, but you do see a couple of body or a couple of people lying down on the stone up ahead of you. Are they moving or are they dead? They don't seem to be moving, but from here it's hard right. to tell anything else. I'll go uh, up to the closest one and uh, investigate, check for vital signs, but still be careful just in case they're like waiting there for somebody to go near them and like stab them in the face. Okay, kind of picking your way across the uneven stone and rubble that's in the room. Fortunately, where it's piled up, it does at least put your feet out of the water, which is ever-present otherwise. Um, after just a moment of taking a look, it's pretty clear that they're no longer living. Both of them, in okay. fact, seem to be shredded. Large chunks of flesh missing from their, their thighs and from their shoulders, and large scratches across much of their body. Um, deep and... What looked like very painful scratches. Uh, Silas will just move in a bit and he'll check out the room in general. Just okay. looking around, looking at the door up there. And... Luther kind of comes forward and takes a look at one of them. What happened to them? Can I figure it out? Um, make a medicine check. Uh -huh. Beside the description that I've given you already, that that would be another yeah. another step. But I mean, like, what what might have done that to them? Mm -hmm. That's an eight, which is terrible. Yeah, I mean, probably something with teeth and claws, judging from the fact that a big chunk was bitten out and claw-like marks are on their bodies. But other than that, it could be a cat or maybe I don't know an owl. Uh, maybe it could have been. Are there dragons in here? I don't know if there are dragons in here, but those would be like dragon marks, wouldn't they? I suppose. Uh, but if it's an animal that did that, it wouldn't have taken any anything from their bodies, so I'll check them for loot. Okay. 
Um, there. Um, Can a check thinking about the similarities of this place and the other temple. Um, if it looks like the damage caused by what's his name, Graveler. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, make a hmm, make an investigation roll as you kind of poke around and look at some of the the damage. That's a natural nineteen, so twenty. Okay. Um, kind of thinking back to to Graveler and when when he's kind of coming up out of the ground or when he's moving around. Normally coming up to the ground, um, he doesn't make any damage at all. He just sort of floats up through it. Uh, but when he's attacking things, uh, he has those those large shaped claws. Uh, he is pretty strong, and stone seems to be something that he can, you know, fight against. Uh, but looking around, uh, there there seems to be evidence not only of sort of sheer force being used, but there's also um, uh, soot marks. There's a little bit of of uh, of bubbled up stone around the edges of some impacts. Um, if you had to hazard a guess, you'd say that either a battle happened here and there were different magics involved or some other, you know, maybe there was, I guess, bottles of acid or things were lit up on fire. Um, a lot of different uh, uh, things were, were used to destroy this room. In fact, kind of looking it over, um, while there are a few small pieces left, the thoroughness with which this damage happened in the initial case is stands out on its own. Um, this room was deliberately destroyed. Uh, from Even if the battle did happen here, someone went through later and even the smaller parts of statues were crushed or burned or exploded. Now, on top of all of that, um, it looks as though the, the water has seeped in causing some damage there and the the roof and walls have started to collapse as you kind of imagine now you would be below the mound that was outside so some of the pressure of that mound has probably started to crack whatever whatever ceiling or, or rooftop stuff there was on this as well although you are underground uh, or at least you would be uh, compared to uh, where you were standing out before um, looking at the uh, the uh, the dead uh, Medric, mm -hmm. uh, make a we'll call this an investigation check as well, actually, um, as you're kind of rifling through their pockets. No, I'm not good at investigation. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a non natural one. You don't see that very often. Hey, Annie, can you check the other one? <laughs> uh, on this one, you find uh, they're, they're carrying a dagger. Uh, they've got a broken bow that looks like it was cracked in two. Uh, a few arrows probably have uh, spilled out into the water. I mean, I'll grab whatever ammunition I, I, I can get if, yeah. if you guys picking stuff up. Uh, yeah, I'll go check the other one. Uh, 17, 18. Okay, there are three arrows. There are actually more arrows there, but because of them sitting in the water for a little while, they seem to have warped and twisted. Um, you also kind of noticed that the, the water itself is not exactly clear and clean. There's a little foam scummy on it. Uh, and you kind of get the impression that some of the water washing over some of the things that have happened here are kind of dragging some of the the, the remains of uh, of the battle of the fight that was going on here into the water. So if there was acid or if there was something used in it, it's kind of made the water a little caustic. Okay. And Annie and checks the I, other I rolled one. A, yeah, I rolled an 18 to check the other one. Okay. The other one, again, you find a dagger. Uh, the bow itself, the string has been cut, but the bow is okay. It's a modest bow. It's nothing really fancy. Um, there is another uh, quiver of, of arrows. This one looks a little bit uh, better than the other. So you find seven usable arrows on this one. Uh, and you also find a small pouch. Uh, oops. Containing 11 silver. And three gold. 
um, as they had a little pouch that was sort of tuffed, tucked, tucked inside their shirt, kind of down under the waistband. Uh, the other thing you find is kind of inside the, 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 the shirt of the, the, let's say it's the, uh, the, uh, the uh, what is that one? Is a half orc, I think. I can't see it from here. It's too small. Uh, but inside the shirt, kind of inside the, the edge of the collar, there's something hard, and you kind of flip it over. And in a, in a carefully folded um, part of the shirt, there's a, a little lump that you flip over, and you find a very small pendant uh, that's pinned on the inside. Or actually, technically, it's a brooch pinned on the inside of the shirt uh, with a very tiny uh, little uh, kind of a round, dark stone. It looks like a, an onyx. And inside the, st the onyx, embedded on the surface of the onyx, with a little silver band uh, holding it in place, is a tiny little diamond. Not sure what it would be worth, but it's probably worth a couple of bucks. But it looks more significant than that. Well, I will grab that as well. And I have a description of that in my notes. Cool. <clears throat> Did I see Annie pull that uh, brooch from the corpse? Unless Annie's hiding it. Okay. So having no, seen I, that, I, I'll check. What? I, I, I would be looking at it, so. Okay. okay. Kind so of having catches. seen her do that, I'll check the collar on the one I was checking to see if there's anything okay. like that. Make an investigation check at disadvantage. Because you've already looked over this body, so clearly it wasn't yeah. there, but... But I didn't look very thoroughly. Oh, that 20 would have been nice. And sure enough, uh, because you saw Annie do it and you kind of take another closer look, you're like, it's got to be something in here somewhere. And you do find a second pendant, exactly the same as the, the other one. Um, taking a closer look, they're clearly individually manufactured. It's not like they're all made to look the same. There are small differences between them, but it's impossible to really tell exactly what those differences are in this dim light. Do you think they were, this is the insignia of people who work for the diamond? Maybe. I mean, I remember I did do a drawing of a tattoo from one of them, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think we ever came across any brooches. No. So. Do either of them have any tattoos that resemble the ones that I did a sketch of? I mean, you can take the time to take a look at them, sure. Uh, peel their clothes back and try to find if they've got tattoos. Luther's looking at all this kind I'll, of like suspiciously. Yeah. I'll, I'll check for that later. Yeah, Silas is going to go check the door. Okay, you do see another yeah, door. Right. I'll check the door too. And I'll check out the rest of the room too. Okay. Well, checking out the rest of the room takes time. I mean, like, is there only one door leading out of here? From what you can That's see like with the, the rubble kind of across most of the room, there only seems to be one one accessible entrance. And in fact, uh, or one other entrance, I should say. In fact, as you look a little bit closer, you can see that rubble has been pulled away from this door, pulled in okay. this direction. Um, this must be where she was going and they must they probably they must have followed her. And something killed them. You, well, killed these two, but they're not uh, they're not the voice I heard anyways. You don't think Mira did this? says Luther. I don't think so, no. Sorry, I realized that the map has become slightly off kilter where it was. Hopefully it lines up a bit better now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Luther looks concerned, kind of trying to f imagine what happened here. Uh, this door, uh, similar to the last door, has uh, it's a heavy stone door, a single one in this particular case, uh, and with that rubble removed from uh, from in front of it, uh, it does seem to have locked. Uh, but Annie, having seen how the other one was done, uh, immediately knows what to do. 
Uh, it is the same mechanism. And you start to think that, that these doors are actually meant to lock themselves. Um, they've got a very clever mechanism inside them that is balanced just right so that when the door closes, it locks. Um, probably, I mean, if you're thinking in, out loud about this, um, a space like this would need to be protected, and you wouldn't want to accidentally leave it open. Ah. I mean, Catherine did say at the other place that the, the place, like, she wasn't worried it would clean up itself, so... It would protect itself, so. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if I can get this to work properly. Uh, there we go. I presume you're going to open that door? Yep. Okay. I got to move things around a little bit. Again, apologize for the rooms being largely empty because I didn't have place to put them put I didn't have things to put in them so quickly uh, but you can imagine that uh, there is the furniture that I will describe uh, and actually oops I just realized that guy is actually there if I can get to the right layer oh good you can't actually see him um, once again uh, you enter into the room this time it is rows upon rows stacked up along the sides of, uh, of little alcoves. And then throughout the middle of the room as well, there's sort of uh, rows of additional alcoves stacked on each other. Um, however, uh, while they had once been kind of orderly and, uh, and careful, now they've all been pulled off to the sides. And you can actually see that there were stone containers in each of these spots that have been systematically pulled out, brought to the middle, and smashed um, and you see once again another uh, another body lying amongst the rubble looking much the same as the other two in the other room uh, torn this time to shreds uh, the the lower body in particular the knees and legs are are torn to ribbons of flesh hanging off of bone uh, and then uh, as the you kind of look upward towards the body um, there are uh, large, large gashes that are come out of their, their shoulder and their throat. Uh, this time a half work. Um, and you can kind of imagine, uh, Medrick, as you see this, this once uh, mighty fighter who you actually recognize as one of the former soldiers you had served with. Uh, he was an efficient soldier. Um, he probably didn't have anything to do when he got back. Had a bit of a temper on him. And who knows what ended up happening after that. But you know he wouldn't have gone down easily. Uh, that whatever struck him uh, was was mighty indeed. And whatever uh, struck him is probably still around. <laughs> so is there blood around him? Like, did he die like recently, or has is there blood but it's dried, or is there no blood at all? Uh, the other ones had a bit of water that washed up on them, making it difficult to determine. There is water in here, but he's actually propped up on top of. Uh, one of the pullover boxes, and you can see, yes, uh, he seemed to have uh, have bled in the box, uh, and the and the, the the body itself is still eerily warm, as the blood is also splashed around him. Uh, in this space, I guess it didn't reveal that part. Pardon me, just gonna do that quickly. Meant to. Um, you see that this room has two doors, one on either side, left and right. Um, um, I would suggest then if this thing is still around, we should probably, when I open the doors, have some range attack ready for something attacking us on the other side of the door. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sure. Um, I'll, okay. charge up, <clears throat> I'll reach in my pocket and charge up some magic stones. Okay. Uh, how long does... Is there a um, no, Actually, never mind. You said you were going to be re recharging the, the shillelagh. Um, so it's, it's... it's... Yeah, it won't be charged. Uh, he'll, he'll have let that drop, but... Okay. You're going to say uh, Medrick? Hmm? I'm going to check if there's a brooch on him, too. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. This way I'm with advantage. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. 
Well, that's an 11. No, that's a 10. Damn it. Wow, okay. Uh, fortunately, you know what to look for. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like that part of his shirt was completely torn away. Uh, there's a large gash where a large bite was taken out around that section. And then whatever was underneath the shirt, and including a lot of his flesh, has also been removed. Okay. You do find uh, a pouch with five silver. Okay. And four gold. You see also his uh, sword lying beside him, a sword and a dagger, um, both of which are covered in blood. Actually, no, they're not covered in blood, uh, except for his own. If nobody has any objections, can I collect the daggers? Go for it. I have no problem. Uh, Does uh, Luther need the sword? If we get attacked, it's good. Yeah, I was going to ask Luther if he has a weapon or... I've never really been a fighter. Uh, and if you don't mind, you could give him one of the daggers. That's probably I'll give him one of the daggers. So the pointy ends goes towards the enemies. I know how to use a dagger. I've, I've, I've cleaned fish before. <clears throat> um... Yeah, we should probably check the doors next. Uh, I just got to run and get some water. I'll be back like 30 seconds. Okay. If, do we want to take a bio break? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we'll... Just out of water. All right. Well, it sounds like uh, two people away at the moment. We'll just be here. I don't know if I actually looked at the chat, so I will take a moment to look at the chat. Oh, look, a whole bunch of spam in the chat. <laughs> I don't know if there's a way to block. We have a chat on Twitch. Yeah, I think you have to get rid of them manually, individually. All right. Can I do this? Let's see. Let's ban that one. This is fun. Ban and ban. Boom. It's like having power, like real power. It's amazing. But for those of you who might be watching live, you can certainly chat there as well. Uh, if you're not watching this live, well, I guess you can leave comments on the YouTube. But you can join us live on Sundays. Um, it's live right now as I'm doing this, which is weird. We'll be back to the midst of this bizarre little dungeon space in a moment. As we move further and further deeper in, in search of... Myra. I need to uh, check my notes anyway. There's a solid like five second delay between us and the Twitch. <laughs> oh, is there? And it's <laughs> Hello, Akemi Production. I see you. But yes, there's there's most likely some delay. Hopefully not too much. I have returned. Excellent. All right, now I feel like I should have taken a bio break, but I was too busy vamping. <laughs> All right, we're going to... I think probably go to a little after five. I, I'm not sure exactly where we'll end. Okay. Um, but that's where we'll we'll kind of aim for at the moment, just to see, just so you have some expectation. But yeah, I'm going strong. I still have pop. I still have goldfish. I don't think I understood any of those words. It's weird. I heard goldfish, and it just confused <laughs> everything I thought I knew. I heard pop and goldfish, so it's I'm assuming it's the food items. Uh -huh. Oh, those goldfish. That makes a lot more sense now. Yes. <laughs> I was like, what What are you doing with fish? It could just be a small uh, bowl with some goldfish nearby and a cat looking at it. I, well, there's that too. There's that too. All right. Uh, as you take a look at the two uh, doors once more, kind of the same sort of style as before, um, they are slightly different patterns this time. 
The one, uh, I'll just describe them left and right. The one to the left uh, has what looks like a stylized, um, I guess you would describe it as a stylized rock on the, fr on the midst of it, um, around which the water seems to be flowing. Uh, on the right-hand side, it looks to have a stylized uh, sort of a, a round circular pool. So, what would you like to do? Mm. So the one on the right has the circular pool? That's yeah. Right. Maybe it's a seeing pool or a bathing pool. I don't know. And there's water covering up the entire floor, right? Yes, still. Okay. Well, Silas moves over to this one. Let's take a look at that. Yep. Okay. Does Annie unlock it for him? If Silas asks me to. I will. I'll investigate it first because these ones seem to have stuff on them. Sure. I mean, if anyone's wants to... been in here, by the way. Sorry. What's that? For how long have we been in the, in this temple? Um, probably about twenty minutes or so. Okay, so the shield is like not fire anymore. Yeah, wow. it would have taken some time to investigate these rooms and to initially open the first door. It took a little, like five minutes. Okay. Um, the door looks fine. I rolled a three. Uh, I will <laughs> unlock it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the one by Silas then? Yep. Okay. You unlock the door easily and it opens up. Um, a little bit of more water flows into this room now. You get the impression that the water was higher than that, that gap in the door that's below. Uh, and the water seems a little bit deeper uh, in this hallway and you see a hallway which leads into a dark room uh, each of you by the door um, which would be Silas and Annie can both make perception checks hearing counts if that matters for you that for me that is a not 20 or 21 wow the difference between the two is amazing uh, as uh, Silas kind of looks down and goes, huh, it's a hallway. Um, uh -huh. The uh, Annie, you hear some swooshing of water. Uh, both the sound kind of, of the water flowing in more than just what flow, flew in through the door, but the sounds of movement in water. Someone's down there. Is it the temple laundry? <laughs> Can you tell how many people there are? It, it's impossible to tell. It, it's it sounded more than more than one thing moving around, but beyond that, it's impossible to tell. Washing water. Should you sure. Is there more water or less water in here than the last room? I think it's more. Judging from the water that flowed when you opened the door and the bit of pressure you actually felt against the door, there's probably more water on, that was on the other side. It's now starting to flow out. Um, you get the impression that while some of it was flowing through the bottom of the door, it was actually above the, that level. And it's moving kind of around your feet right now, flowing into this room. Okay. I, I think this is the way she went. Maybe. Or the, it's that creature. Who knows? Well, Hopefully just, the way she went. <laughs> uh, just in case, uh, I cast water breathing. It will affect ev all of us for 24 hours. Cool. And then Silas is going to move on. It's not really much sneaking through what, this, so... Uh, Nope. I think the map yeah. is getting missized or moved again. <sighs> Sometimes squares on the things are not quite right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. All right. 
correct. When there's multiple buildings, or sometimes it happens. Yeah, I guess they might not be aligned with each other. Now that I think about it, it should be. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Yeah, like where my square, where my icon is, it's almost perfectly lined up. Yeah, I just noticed that when I moved into the next space, it was definitely not. Um, yeah, mine's off. It's off in here. So I think it's just that the squares on the map are slightly smaller than the, or slightly larger in some well, cases than the. Uh, that's the kicker is I, is I actually resized everything <laughs> to try to make it work properly. Yeah. Um, and now I'm not sure which level these are on. Okay, they are there. Um, similar to before, you go into this room. This room is filled with, um, or was filled perhaps, with uh, jugs. Um, large, round vases, essentially, or uh, what's the word? Amphora, I think is the word I'm looking for. Um, yep. They're about uh, two and a half, three feet tall at times. They have that kind of natural uh, curved bell, uh, invert bell uh, shape. Uh, it was filled with shelf upon shelf of these, but they've now all been smashed and uh, laid bare. Um, you can see that some of them seem to have had dust in them. Others seem to have had grain, possibly, although it's kind of graying and floating in the water right now. Some of them may have had liquids or oils, um, kind of like a storeroom, only a weird place to have a sort of storeroom, if you will. Uh, and in and amongst uh, these uh, this rooms, uh, you do find two more bodies, um, similarly treated. Um, as you take a look at them, um, let's see, who's walking into the room in what space? Uh, Silas went in and moved to the right immediately, just in case anything was going on. Okay, and imagine that there are yeah, essentially row after, okay, row after row of, of shelving units, essentially, in here. Some of them knocked over, all of them made of stone. Um, Andy, I'll go investigate the body that's further along. Okay. Um, and Silas will go look at the door. Okay. Uh, Medrick, you, you kind of walk over in that direction. You're kind of swirling through. And now you realize that the water is just up over your thigh. It's almost up to your knee. Or not thigh, rather. It's just up to over your, over your, uh, your calf. Almost up yeah. to your knee in here. And you can kind of uh, hear the sound of water rushing in from where you are. You can almost feel the water moving as well. Um, you uh, you bend down to take a look at this this woman who's there, um, blood kind of floating in the in the water around her, and her eyes shoot open as she looks at you, kind of coughs, gurgling, and then her back arches painfully. What do you do? Are you okay? Can you talk? Um, she seems to be uh, arching out of the water a little bit and then slowly sinking back. Her voice, nothing more than a gurgle at this point. I'll I give her uh, cure wounds at level one. Keeping in mind, uh, Annie, that this is full of back and forth rows of shells. So it's not a direct line across the room. Um, so it'll take you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can dash. Yep. And... I just wanted to make sure that the conception of the room was, was fitting with people's models. Yep. Um, so she gets four HP. All right. Uh, she coughs and spits out blood uh, and, uh, and kind of looks at you wide eyed and tries to move, but she seems to be stuck where she is. I'll try to pull her out. Okay. Make Gently. A, make a strength check as you kind of try to pull her up and feel resistance. Like when, it, when Ignis rolls for damage, he always does max. <laughs> or hi. <laughs> when Ignis does anything, he rolls at max. He is the most, what was that? How's that go? He is the most interesting god in the world. <laughs> oh, here we go. There you go. And that, that rolled twice because I pushed the touchpad twice, but it's very oh, sensitive. So the nat 20, okay. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, as you kind of uh, reach down to her and, and go to just lift her up out of the water uh, mm -hmm. as she kind of was, was not drowning, but certainly having some, some issues. And you feel yourself kind of pulling her off of uh, something which was holding her there. 
and you see her wince in pain uh, as you pull her up off of uh, a uh, a um, a spike of stone that was sticking upward that she had been sort of tossed onto. And there's a massive wound on her back. I'll try to stabilize that. <laughs> okay. And she's you kind of holding her close to kind of do that. She's barely got any energy of her own. And she whispers into, into your ear the sort of burbly, uh, bubbling whisper. They're going to be back soon, the little ones. Run. What's, what's going to be back? Um, you're going to try to stabilize her? Well, actually... Yeah, I'll give her another cure light or a cure light wound. Okay. Damn it. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> so she gets three HP. <laughs> oh. Um she breathes a little bit <laughs> easier. That's more damage to me than I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um there's a kind of that kind of flare around you that you also see Annie that that you can you can tell that Medric is trying to save this person's life, but also um, they are, are kind of weakly looking. Um, Ignis is also kind of <laughs> Ignis is kind of like they're just going to fight you. They're for the bad guys. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, if I have to, okay. I guess I will heal this person if you really insist. But I'm going to make you pay for it. <laughs> um, so she's good enough to walk on her own now like she's starting to stand I'll... up on her own and she looks towards Annie uh, Annie about the same time as she looks towards you her eyes go wide and she points and you hear a sound just behind you and I need to change levels doggone it it was going to be so smooth too he said knowing it was never going to be smooth hmm <laughs> as kind of just barely poking up over the water. You see a strange, odd, toad-like creature, only standing up to about your uh, mid-thigh. It is uh, got a massive head. In fact, there's almost no neck whatsoever. In fact, you probably couldn't call it a neck, just so much an extension of its head as it goes into its round uh, 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 body. It's got uh, uh, large... Uh, claws on each hand that extend out about three inches from its uh, massive fingers. Uh, it's got large toad-like eyes that have popped up out of the water, and then its its whole body kind of lifts up a little bit as its nose kind of uh, extends just above the water, big, wide, flat nose and massive mouth. Yummy. And uh, I, I am not surprised... You're not surprised, no. In fact, it was because she was able to point it out just at the same time your high perception before it actually noticed it. It doesn't count as a sneak attack, although it was trying. Yeah. So, we could go into combat right now, but I know this is going to take longer than a few minutes. So, I'm going to have to pause there. <laughs> Because it, it just turned 5 o'clock, so it kind of was on, on the queue. Depending on what you guys did and which direction you guys decided to go, it could be a little bit different. Um, any final questions about the scene before we call it to a close, just so we can make sure we cement everything we need to? She said the little ones. I'm not sure if that's a little one, but uh, yeah, there's probably going to be more of these, aren't there? <laughs> Hard to say. Uh, one thing I will say is the room counts as difficult terrain because of all of, again, the sort of piles of, of broken pottery and different broken shelves. So keep that in mind when you're moving around. Um, do you think for next week you can put just like generic rectangles, even just where the big shelves are? Certainly can. Certainly can. In fact, I'll probably do that right after the session just so that I can I remember to do it. Yeah. Just so that we have a bit better idea of like where shells are versus where just basic difficult terrain. Will do. Will do. I almost wrote down will do. I meant to write down draw shells. <laughs> um, but yeah, as long as I'm conscious, I don't get su uh, surprised and they can't roll advantage if I don't see them. So. Yep. 
it chose the wrong one to try to sneak up on. So, any other so, questions about the scene before we draw today to a close? I hate to do it at this particular time, but I really don't feel comfortable with heading into a combat scene, given how long it will take. Yeah, that's fine. Does the bandit I just brought back to life, does she have weapons? <laughs> uh, she did have weapons before, so probably they're sitting right there beside her. Any other questions? If not... No. All right. Well, thank you very much to my players. Thank you to have listened. Even the spammers, I don't care. You watched. It, it kind of counts. <laughs> but, actually, I don't want any more spammers back. Don't do that. But <laughs> if you have uh, any uh, comments about it, you can find us on Facebook. We'll go back to our main thing here. We have a Legends of the Drowned Isles and a Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Watchers meant for more discussion. I have been delinquent in trying to set up the World Anvil site, but I'm hoping to get some time to do that. I don't know when I'm going to invent this time, but I'm hoping. Um, a couple of weeks of a conference has sucked up a lot of my my creative energy, but hopefully that's done now. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can find the recordings of these on youtube.com slash encaf1. Look for a couple of different playlists. There's a Legends of the Drowned Isles playlist, which is for everything, including the previous campaign which is on pause at the moment. There's also an LOTDI, The Great Confusion. So you can find episodes specifically, I guess the first 19 episodes of this particular campaign, in case you're wondering how it all got to this point. How did this, How did anything happen at this point? Who knows? I don't really know if I know. But that's okay. Mystery is the name of the game. Actually, the name of the game is D&D, but we'll let that pass. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks so much to my players for putting up with my weird nonsense. And anything you'd like to say before we go? Nothing comes to mind. Have a good week. Stay safe. Wear your mask. I don't know. <laughs> and with that rousing send-off, we shall see you again <laughs> next time.